So are we holding people on the spectrum to neurotypical standards when they really have their own standards for what is a good life? Just because I say you should have four friends, doesn't mean that means he should have four friends. All right, buckle up and welcome to the Daily BA. If you look at the continuum of human experience, uh, my job I think sometimes is overwhelming because I think of everything that we as humans do. And in our field, working with individuals with autism spectrum disorders, we tend to narrow cast. Like we say, okay, well, we're gonna teach them to shower, like I said, or teach them some job skills or teach them. Those are such small parts of human existence. Um, and the one part that gets the most attention I talk about is sexuality. Like who is this person as a sexual being? And only now are we starting to talk about what relationships might be for people on, on, on the autism spectrum, what sexual relations may be, about the diversity of sexual expression that exists within the autism community. Like we now have data that for these very able individuals who can self-report, um, they report higher levels of asexuality, of bisexuality, of being gay, than do their typical peers of trans, where there's a significantly higher reporting level of trans um, among these individuals and their peers. How does behavior analysis address that? Like, our field is not um, approaching those big questions related to the actual life of this person. Are you trying to tackle those? Uh, we are, because we're starting to look at um, protecting individual privacy that you have a right to be yourself as a person. Um, I think we've over applied this word appropriate, like appropriate behavior. He has to engage in appropriate behavior. I will tell you the best times of my life are when I haven't been appropriate. You know, that when I had like one drink too many, or I, I said something that maybe somebody took offense to, but other people found funny, or, you know, those are the things that we remember and talk about. Nobody reminisces over the times that they were appropriate. You know, you reminisce over this other stuff. And there's a certain freedom sometimes in that. Like, I love that the individuals that I work with, like, I, I tell community members who don't know autism, I say, if you want to understand true human emotion, hang out with somebody on the autism spectrum for a while. Because when they're happy, they're just happy. Like, there's no secondary reason. They're just happy. And if they're upset, they're just upset. Like, if they like you, they just like you. Like, you have established some sort of contingency that they find value in, therefore they like. They're not after your hot sister. They're not trying to get money from you. It's that really, and there's a, an honesty there. There's a, a value there that I think sometimes we overshape behavior away from that. That trying to have this model of appropriate behavior based upon this neurotypical standard. And even if you look at some of the research now on quality of life, that majority of quality of life research for people with autism spectrum disorders is third person reports, just like adaptive behavior reports. So it's their mother fills it out or a, a, somebody who's their, their adult care worker fills it out. But when we ask people who are verbal about their quality of life, they tend to report higher levels of quality of life than these third person reports. So are we holding people on the spectrum to neurotypical standards when they really have their own standards for what is a good life? Just because I say you should have four friends doesn't mean that means he should have four friends. But we say, oh no, you need to have friends in your life. You need to have everybody on the spectrum I talk to says they have friends. It's not typically defined how I define it. But again, as a behavior analyst, those are the things we should be asking. Those are the questions we should be tackling. And if it's your sexuality, how do I best support you to be who you are in a safe and, and potentially beneficial way as possible? You know, whether you're trans or bi or gay or um, asexual or whoever, like what I can do for you is give you some, some um, ability to understand that but then also to be safe when you express it. And we have sort of, not abandoned, but we avoid it. Like we don't want to talk about it. 
we sort of say it's outside our area of expertise when it is precisely our area of expertise. You know, when you look at behavioral skills training, like it's ideal to help kids understand like how to behave safely, independent of who they are as a person. Yeah, and that's why I sometimes get very frustrated with our field. Um, but I think anybody in any field gets frustrated with their field because we have so much potential. You know, we really, you know, can change lives. Like that's our, that, that's my, my job description. My job description is change somebody's life for the better. And every day I go to bed and think, did I do that? Um, some days I get to say yes, those are the good days. Um, some days it's a, it's a no. Um, I don't have a whole lot of days where I completely screw up and like, change somebody's life for the worse. Yeah. But it, it can happen because our contingencies are pretty powerful. This channel is entirely supported by people like you. If you have the means to, please check out the link to Patreon and maybe consider helping bring more of this to the world. That's your daily BA.